In today's connected age, it is possible for someone to open your front door using an interactive doll. Now, you may wonder how this is possible. Well, let me introduce Kayla. Kayla is an interactive doll, and she has internet connectivity. She can answer questions, and she can also read stories to your child via an app. So let me demonstrate this to you now. story. Let me start. This is a story all about my dog Daisy and how we got her. I'm so happy she's a part of my family. Now two years ago a number of vulnerabilities were reported with the doll. And so last summer I asked one of my intern students to try and hack Kayla. It took the student just five minutes. This story is so much fun to tell. Let me start. Hello, my name is Gayla and I have been hacked by Adam Galway, an intern at the Centre for Secure Information Technologies. It turns out that there were no built-in security features in the doll at all. Now, Kayla is also capable of recording audio and replaying it and it has been demonstrated that she can be hacked into to issue the required voice activation for smart locks. And unfortunately, there are many interactive devices with internet connectivity, like Kayla, that do not consider security or it is just an afterthought. Now, the Internet of Things, or IoT, is the extension of internet connectivity to physical devices and everyday objects. And these devices can communicate and interact with each other via the internet and are referred to as smart devices. So you can picture being at work in your office just about to leave for home and you could, through your mobile phone, turn on your heating, turn on the tumble dryer and check with your fridge to see if you need to pick up some milk on the way home. And that, that kind of thing defines really what we're facing with the Internet of Things. Now it's forecast that by next year, there will be four connected devices per person in the world. And this is set to grow to nine connected devices per person by 2025. Now, last year, Tech Republic, a website for IT professionals, released a list of the 11 least secure connected devices. And unsurprisingly, this included devices like interactive toys, smart locks, connected cars, wireless uh, medical devices, overlooked office devices like connected coffee pots, wireless routers, and smart, smart baby monitors. And what you have to remember is that if an attacker compromises any one of these devices and gains internal access to your network, then all of your information is at risk. Now, we're seeing a significant increase in the last number of years in the numbers of attacks of IoT devices. Back in October 2016, the Murai botnet compromised over 100,000 IoT devices. And this was for use in a massive distributed denial-of-service attack against an internet service provider in the US. And the affected services were things like Amazon, Twitter, Netflix, and news websites like Fox and CNN. And the Murai botnet, there have been many variants of this botnet since 2016. And more recently, what we're seeing is more sophisticated botnets, so more so than even Murai. And the latest one is, was uh, emerged in 2018 called Torai. And it's capable of targeting an even larger number of IoT device platforms. And rather than being used in a uh, distributed denial of service attack, this Tori botnet is capable of extracting secret information from devices and running commands on the infected devices. Now, interestingly, last year, during the Trump-Putin summit that was held in Finland in July, 
there was a significant spike in the number of attacks against IoT devices around the dates of the summit. And the devices targeted were those that could yield audio and visual intelligence, so likely an attempt to gather intel on the two world leaders and their staff. Now, a common theme of all of these attacks and the botnets is that they use weak or default credentials on devices in order to gain access to them. Now, counterfeit connected devices are also on the rise. So as we see an increase in the number of internet connected devices, are we heading for an internet of cloned things? So with the globalization of the supply chain, the design and assembly of electronic devices is now distributed worldwide. We have the use of overseas silicon chip foundries, the use of third-party intellectual property and third-party test facilities. So with so many untrusted entities now involved in the design and assembly phases, it's becoming increasingly difficult to ensure the authenticity and integrity of our devices. So the supply chain is now considered to be vulnerable to a range of hardware-based security threats, including the malicious modification of electronic circuits, this is known as hardware trojans, intellectual property piracy, reverse engineering, and cloning. So for the true potential of IoT devices to be realized, and this world of internet-connected devices connecting to each other, security must be a priority. And it must be inbuilt into devices right from the outset of their design. And in fact, security must be prioritized right, right across the value chain. So from the device manufacturers and IoT service providers to the retailers and consumers. So what can we do? Well, last year, the National Cybersecurity Center, or NCSC, released a, a code of practice for consumer IoT devices. And in this year, in February, there are new European standards that have been published for IoT device manufacturers. And both of these require the manufacturers to ensure security is considered in the design of all new IoT devices. Now, at Queen's University Belfast, my team and I are investigating lightweight designs that can be used to authenticate IoT devices. And this is using what's known as physical and clonable function technology. Here comes the science part. So what is PUF technology? A PUF is a digital circuit that can distinguish between inconsistencies in electronic chips that occur during fabrication. And it uses these identifiers to distinguish between every single chip. So it, it creates a unique identifier for every chip, whether they are the same or not. And this is quite similar to a digital fingerprint. So this technology could be used to authenticate an IoT device. So if your device was cloned, the cloned device would the identifier of the clone device would differ from that of your genuine one. And we can also use the technology to securely access devices and to detect to see whether they've been tampered with or not. Now, we've developed a very lightweight puff design that's specifically targeted for hardware devices. And this technology uh, it offers very high uniqueness and reliability across different devices. And it has been built into a demonstration model for electronic component counterfeiting in industry. We are also investigating the detection of these hardware trojans or electronic modifications in electronic circuits. Now, this is a really complex problem, not unlike trying to find a needle in a haystack. But with advanced techniques like machine learning, we are able to accelerate the detection process of these malicious modifications. So what can you do? Well, I will give you four tips for buying IoT devices. Number one, change default passwords and pins. So the IoT device manufacturers today uh, will sell devices that have uh, default passwords, usernames, and pins 
that are very simple. So for example, admin 00001234. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a common way attackers use to gain access to their target devices. So if you do buy an IoT device or a network connected device, change the default password. Now the good news is that in the future with these new European standards, the device manufacturers are no longer able to sell devices with default passwords. So all new devices in the future should come with unique passwords. Keep software updated. So many of the device manufacturers will issue uh, software updates for devices in order to protect them from potential vulnerabilities. So if it is possible, ensure you, uh, you enable your device to auto-update, and this will ensure that it has the latest software. Number three, consider placing your IoT devices on a separate network. So if, you, if an attacker does gain access to a, a device, then they will not be able to access your home computers and your mobile phones, which are likely to contain sensitive or private information. Now, you should also check to see if your wireless router supports guest networking. So this allows you to connect a device to your network, but it doesn't provide it with access to shared files or other networked devices. And finally, number four. So when you are buying devices, make sure they have built-in security features. Check the user reviews to see if there are any known vulnerabilities uh, reported for the device. The UK government is currently considering plans to label IoT devices with information on how resilient they are to cyber attacks. So therefore, if an IoT device hasn't considered security, don't buy it. Thank you very much.